So we're talking about logarithmic functions. Okay? Um, and we have a graph here. The first graph here of our blue one uh, is giving us our exponential model. Okay? In this case, we have a greater than 1, which means we're talking about exponential growth. So we have a function of little exponentially increasing. Now, on the right here, we've gone over a couple of things. This would be technically an inverse of it, but another way of representing it would be in log form. So the inverse of y is equal to base a power of x can be written as, and this is the way we're going to focus on it, is because it's logs. y is equal to log base a to the logarithm of x. Okay, so technically we're talking about these as being inverses. Even though we know these to be, we're going to represent this as a log of it. Okay? Now, with inverses, we know that inverses, essentially the graph is flipped along um, a y equals x equation. Flipped on this line, and some major points we got to talk about um, with our exponential model. X-axis is always an asymptote. Whether it's exponential growth or decay, the x-axis here is going to be an asymptote. It's never going to function. Okay. We also have a point of a y-intercept of zero and one. Reason for that being is I'm going to just quickly show you this. When x is zero, so say y was five. When x is zero, any exponent to the power of zero is so that's why we're crossing that there, okay? So the logarithm, which is our inverse of it, our y act, our y intercept being 0 and 1, well, in that case, it'll become our x-intercept because we inverted the function, so 1 and 0 is our x-intercept. And because the x-axis was our horizontal asymptote for the exponential model, the new, the new asymptote will be the y-axis for the logarithm, the inverse function. Do those ideas make sense? So that's for exponential growth. Decay is the same ideas, just the graphs look a little different. Now decay is when a is between 0 and 1. So in other words, our model, which is here, this a value is between 0 and 1. So maybe it's a fraction or a decimal, something like that. We have exponential decay. So it starts really high and comes down. Still the same thing though, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. We still cross 0 and 1 as a y-intercept, reason being because still the same idea, we have, let's say y is equal to say 0 0.88, just an arbitrary number, to the power of 0, we still know it's going to be 1, okay, in terms of our graph. So we have that coming through. Um, the inverse of the function still falls on y equals x. Um, because our x-axis was a horizontal asymptote, with our log, a y-axis is going to be our vertical asymptote. And because our y-intercept was 0, 1, we're going to now instead have an x-intercept of 1 and 0. Those points make sense? Okay, so those are important points we've got to go along. Let's start off with question number 2 here. Okay, so they're asking us to sketch the graph of the inverse. Now, um, essentially, if I wanted to do this the graphing way, I would, could make a table. Okay, I could do x and y values. I'll make a blurry line to go here. We know that the range of our graphs, this would be my x, this would be my y answers, okay? The range of the range of the graph we're in right now is from negative 10 to positive 10. So in other words, in my x-axis, I would go from negative 10, negative 9, 0, 1, all the way up to 9 and 10, okay? We would go through all of those points. We would plug those values into our equation, which is y is equal to 4, and I would start with my first value, because this is x, so my first value we would do y is equal to 4 to the power of negative 10. Uh, do not have to flip an exponent. We essentially get y to the power of 1 over 4 to the power of 10. We'll be dealing with a fraction. So it's a very, very small number, 4 to the power of 10. Okay, I'm wrong. So it's 1 divided by 1,048,576. So in other words, that point is extremely close to the x-axis, but not on it. It'll eventually increase, 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 and what what about when we're at the point of zero, when x is equal to zero? I'm going to just represent this as 1 over 4 to the power of 10, just because it's such a large number to write. Okay, and this would be represented 1 over 4 to the power of 9. What about when y is zero? What is, sorry, when x is zero, what's my y value going to be? One. 1. Great. Here's another key point. What about when x is 1? What will my y value be? is equal to 4 to the power of 1? Yeah, it's 4, right? 
So we know that's going to be a key point on our thing also. Whatever our base is, our one value is going to be that base number. Okay? And then again, when we get here, we're going to get 4 to the power of 9, extremely large number, 4 to the power of 10, extremely large again. So we won't even be on the chart for many minutes. Okay? So when we go to sketch that, we made some assumptions. We made some assumptions that it's going to be very, very close, and then eventually here, there's a major point we know it's going to happen, which is at zero and one. We also know another major point is going to be at one and four, right? So these are two major points of this. Now I'm not actually sketching the inverse. I'm sketching the original graph. So this is our f at x is equal to four at x. Now we know the inverse of this function can be flipped on a line like that. Okay. So because our x-axis, if you notice, is definitely a horizontal asymptote, so our exponential function wasn't covering that part of the graph, it won't touch this. We know that that's now, because it's inverted, that will be our y. A key point of this will be at 0 and 1, or sorry, 1 and 0, I should say. So we're going to have a point at 1 and 0. The inverse of the function, looking at what we have here, will be written like this. I'll do it in red. We know that our y-axis is going to be here. Another key point is going to be what with our inverse? We knew that we had 1 and 4. 4 and 1. Here's another key point in our inverse, right? 4 and 1. Here's a key point in our inverse. So we go up, and we know that the inverse does something like that. Now we should write this in first. This becomes y is equal to what? Log, what's the base of the value? Four. Yep, 4, because that was our base and exponent, x. Okay. So there is our sketch of the inverse of this function. Yeah, something like that? OK, so here are some forms we can write these functions in. Right? Um, the original is our y equals base a to the now we're going to write the inverse of this. We're going to write it two different ways, exponentially and logarithmically. Uh, inverse exponentially is really easy. We literally just switch the x and the y in terms of their places, and we get x is equal to a to the power of y. The log is a little different because we actually still set it equal to y. Okay, That's what's really important about this. And the other ones we've been setting things equal to x. We set this equal to y, and we put log base a to x. Okay. So one of our questions they've asked us, if we look at the graph, and we'll put them down like this, we'll see plus two and four. They have the graph of y is equal to log two x. Okay. So what form is this in right now? Log. So this is in the logarithmic form. Okay. So we're in logarithmic form. Let's change this to the inverse form. Okay, so exponential form of the inverse. Okay, so in this form we have x is equal to what is it? Two to the power of y. Okay, and then how would we write this in the original form? Original would be y is equal to 2x, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Now, also in this question, they gave us a little more information. They said to help you determine the solution of, and I'm going to write it over here in red, and we've got to figure out which form this is in right now. It's 8 is equal to 2y. Which form is this referring to? Is it referring to logarithmic, exponential, or original form? We're directly related to the exponential form right now. Okay? So with that information. Okay. Now, uh, in the log form, what this is saying, okay, what value, or sorry, what place is that taking? This 8 took the place of what variable? X. So essentially we could write it in there at X, right? We can rewrite this equation to say Y equal to log 2 8 right or the other version of this um, 
Okay, that's our, our version right now. So when we what they're saying is the x value on our graph, we replace with eight to solve for the y. So when we go to look at our graph, and I'm going to quickly draw the graph up. We have our question here, and remember above, we said eight was replacing the value of x. So essentially in our log form, x at eight. So we take a look at this. When x is eight, what is our value of y? Value of y is two. So we can use that to solve, which makes complete sense because two to the power of three is equal to four. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep. So that's the inverse of our original what we put in our original x. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the inverse of the graph here. Okay, so this is a question seven. We're just doing an example here. Let's say this is the function they gave us. And they want the inverse of this. So we know that inverses are essentially oh, flipped here. So let's think about, let's think of what would the exponential, just the exponential version of this be? Exponential form. Right now we're in logarithmic form, right? So there's a... What would the inverse of that be? Yeah, that's our inverse. Which is what we're normally used to seeing as our original. Mm -hmm. Right? So they tell us we're starting with the logarithmic function and then we're looking for an inverse. Well, the inverse will essentially be this function t of this. The inverse will be y is equal to 2. So usually what our original function is, okay? Okay, we have log 3 root 3 in exponential form, all right? Looking at what we have over here, that gives us root 3 equal to 3y, okay? Now, this is a radical function. I don't know if you remember this from grade 11, but radical functions are essentially the exponent, so let's say x to the power of 1 over Now this is a, technically if there's no number there, it's assumed it's a squared root. Okay. So in other words, to write this in the version of y, this will look like this. We'll get 3 to the power of 1 over, and our a is this one. So we're going to get ax is equal to, um, is equal to x over 1 over. That's the best way to explain it. Okay, so this is the difference here. So in order to write it as an exponent, this now becomes 1 over the okay. 1 over 2 is equal to 3y. So in other words, y, if you drop the bases, is equal to 1 half in this case. Okay. Just got to remember your radical exponents for that. Okay? So question 10, they asked us why log 3 can never be, this can never exist, this function here. And the reason being is we wrote it exponentially. Ne we're essentially writing negative 9 is equal to 3 to the power of x. Well, that can't be because in this case, we can, we're multiplying a positive number by itself a certain amount of times. We can never keep multiplying by positives and get a negative number. It just won't work. We need to keep going. So the transformation in logs, we just got to go back to our other stuff. Now remember, we know that the red things are up and down, essentially, our y-axis, right? So... A works with stretches. You can see stretches along the y-axis, and this deals with translations. Or C. And K again deals with DS. DS or just DS? And oh sorry. Horizontal translations. Does that idea make sense? Mm -hmm. So essentially, our red, our red ones deal with the y-axis. They're just quick little names, right? Movements on the y-axis, and our blue ones deal with movements on the x-axis. Okay. Now, along with that, you're specifically working with log function. So if we're dealing with a log function, let's deal with um, 
I usually find the translations the easy, easiest. So, like our first example with D, the first type of translation would be Y is equal to, actually I find these the easiest, log, and it's going to be log, usually they do base 10. So you know, you've got the, base 10 is a base you guys are going to work with a lot. This is usually the first one to work with. The transformations will be the same, just the function itself will be graphed. Translations don't change. They they still affect the function the same way. The graph of it will be different. It'll be longer, or thinner, or something like that. Uh, a different arc to it. Uh, log x and now, so rho plus c. So this you're just moving this thing up or down, right? So the first one, an example of that would be y is equal to log ten x. Let's say plus three. So up three. You, you technically it doesn't as long as you do them properly you, you can do them in any order it's just uh, if a teacher has a preference like for instance they're asking you that they specifically want so that would be an example of what you would see um, our next example let's say we have y is equal we're talking about log 10 and in this case it's x minus d right yeah. Yeah. same idea before but Well, let's say it was, let's say it's plus 3. Yeah, I guess I have that. So y is equal to plus 10. That's two of them. And let's do y is equal to, I find the a the easier one of the two of these. So this is called a vertical stretch. Now the factor of the it's a longer exponent, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh too much. Another example. I usually don't have a set, a set type of graph for that. If they have one, I would think it's a log 10 y. Now this is a horizontal pressure. And essentially, if we were to tie this all together, say we put all of those together, we would have something that looks like this. Y is equal to, I'm just going to put these points in, Y is 10. And these are all in the form of the 3. So plus 3. Did we say plus 3 in the other one? I can't remember now. This is a 3. Plus three. No. So we always use positive three throughout it, okay? Well, that would be all of them together. That's so what the function would look like. Alright, does that make sense?